Hi, I'm Meg Cabot, and I'm the writer of Black Canary Ignite. In the past, I've written books for adults, teenagers, and middle grade. Probably the book I'm most well known for is the, called The Princess Diaries. It's a series, it was made into a couple of movies, but I've also written mysteries, paranormal, and some books for little kids about moving into a scary house. I'm Cara McGee, I do the art on Black Canary Ignite. I have also done other young adult graphic novels, including Dodge City and Over the Garden Wall for Boom Studios. So Black Canary Ignite is a book about a young woman. She is actually a middle school student, and she is discovering her superpower for the first time. And she has a pretty, I think, cool superpower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't know, she's so happy about it. But her superpower is that she has the ability to create a supersonic cry that can break glass, it can decimate armies. Knock over bullies. So it's actually a pretty cool superpower, but I don't think Dinah is at first that excited about it. It's not a great superpower to get when you're a teenager, for sure, when you just want to scream about any, everything anyway. She has to figure out how to do these things without hurting people. Exactly. So in order to help Dinah master her powers, she has to get help. So she looks for help in what turns out to be some mentors. And those mentors turn out to be people she never expected. Because of course, when you have a superpower, you have to keep it secret. It's not something that you can just go around, even in Gotham City, and advertise. For one thing, because not everybody believes you. And for another thing, her parents aren't really thrilled to find out that she has a superpower, especially her dad, who's a cop, and he wants to keep his little girl safe. But she really looks up to him and really wants to emulate him and like be, you know, help Gotham out. Um, so I think, you know, he fulfills that role, but she also needs direct help, which she gets from some... Well, her choir teacher turns out to be somebody that she is able to turn to because it's her voice and she needs help modulating her voice and her choir teacher has a great deal of influence on her which um, turns out to be surprising because her choir teacher she doesn't seem to know that she has a special she's superpower. She's just like, hey this girl can sing. <laughs> she wants her to go home to Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> but it turns out that her PE teacher is, was, I think is someone you had a special interest in drawing. Yeah. Maybe. I'm we're not, not going to we're not going to reveal too much because it's a spoiler. Yeah, I don't want to say who it is because I will I will tell you. I as an artist, I have a bad habit of starting to draw a book before I've read the entire thing. So, I made the mistake. I don't think it was even a mistake, but I started drawing this character early on in the book without knowing that they would be revealed later to be a particular superhero. Maybe. So by the time I got to that reveal in the book, I was like, oh, I guess this is what this character looks like now. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I think it worked out all right, and I was very excited to draw them as that, as that character. It's a very cool character. I was very stoked to get to include them as uh, one of Dinah's mentors. So Dinah has some very, very particular and special mentors. Um, did you have any special mentors growing up? Growing up, my grandfather actually um, was very encouraging um, of me as an artist. He had um, taught drafting and architecture for a very long time, um, so he is more of a technical art artist. But he's the one who taught me how to like draw cartoons, like using outlines and, and things like that. And he's always been very supportive. Once I got to college, I was lucky enough to go to the Savannah College of Art and Design, where I had some amazing professors like Sean Crystal um, and Nolan Wood and even after graduating college they've been with me this whole time like really yeah encouraging me I don't think I would have ever had the courage to like go into comics let alone draw a superhero book without their involvement and support yeah. Yeah. what about you I did I had I think a very supportive family like yours my um, mom always wanted to be a writer and um, she actually sent stories out and tried to get them published. She won the Seventeen Magazine Fiction Contest when wow. she was a young girl, and so it was always very encouraging me, of me sending my stories out. And um, I just had great teachers, really supportive teachers all along, much like Dinah, yeah. um, who were really supportive of me and um, you know would read my stories out loud and tell me to try to get them published. So I feel very fortunate that I had a lot of really great mentors the way Dinah Dinah does too. Yeah. None of them I don't think turned out to be superheroes like wearing that a cape. Know. No. But they were superheroes to me. Yeah. yeah.
So was there a piece of advice that was maybe super valuable that a mentor gave to you that you could pass on? Yeah, a lot of what I, I got in when I was in art school in particular from my professors and other professional artists who would come in and teach us um, was don't be precious. Don't be afraid to really just get something out there. If you Even if you don't think it's going to be perfect, just, just get it done. Just like do your best and you know what? It's just going to get better and better the more you do it. But if you're holding yourself back because you don't think it's going to be good enough, you're never going to accomplish anything. I think I was passed on a piece of advice that was very similar to that. And it was actually not so much from a mentor, but from my husband. <laughs> I don't really think of as a mentor, but he went through um, creative writing school and knew what it was like to get rejected. When I was sending out my work and it kept getting rejected, there was a certain point where I thought, I'm just going to quit because this isn't worth it and nothing's, nothing's happening. And he said, you know, I love playing golf. And if somebody told me every day that I was bad at golf, and I wouldn't quit because I love doing it. So why would you quit something you love doing just because people are telling you you're not good at it? And that made so much sense to me. I, so I didn't quit sending my stuff out and I didn't quit writing and I'm so glad I didn't because if I had I would not be sitting here next to you today and I would not have Black Canary so yeah it was really good advice I think that was the best advice thank you yes what, what makes a good mentor what makes a good mentor I think patience probably patience, yeah. yeah because and I, I'll speak personally um, since I've started having work published I've had a lot of students come to me um, with, to ask you for advice and stuff. And it can be a scary thing when you realize that you're in that position now where people are looking to you. And you're like, I don't think I'm, <laughs> I can offer this kind of advice. But I think you just have to do your best and be patient with the people asking because you have to put yourself in their shoes and remember what it was like getting started. I think that's really true. I think that's probably the best piece of advice. You have to be um, patient and not, too, not harsh. Yeah. about it and not you know it, don't crush their dreams yes but also i will add a caveat uh -oh. be honest and realistic about, yeah. about realistic i think things. you do kind of it's hard work yeah. you know, even doing something like comic books yes. and a lot of people don't assume that it is but i think it is hard work. as long as you're honest with people who want to do things yeah. like this about how much work goes it, into it it may not pay the bills right away you can pick, pick up, up black canary ignite, ignite everywhere, everywhere books, books are sold for the latest in comic and entertainment news stay tuned to the beat